Welcome to Behind the Paranormal with Paul and Ben Eno. Why are UFOs and aliens so often themes in advertising? How long has that been the case? Outside of movies, is any advertising based on real cases? Hello and welcome to the eight, or sorry, 968th edition of Behind the Paranormal with Paul and Ben Eno, coming to you from WON AM and FM Radio in Woonsocket, Rhode Island, on the Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live on YouTube and via TuneIn.com. I'm Ben, and that was Paul. And today we welcome back an old friend on a very unusual subject. Peter Robbins is an investigative writer, author, and lecturer whose writing and research are focused on the subject of truly anomalous UFOs and their their implications for humanity. He has appeared as a guest on and been consultant to numerous radio shows, television programs, and documentaries. A friend and colleague of the pioneering abduction researcher Bud Hopkins, Peter was a prolific author and lecturer speaking at UFO conferences throughout North America and Europe. His numerous credits include working as a research assistant on the United Nations Secretary General's 1978 report for the establishment of a UN UFO department. We know Peter is a painstaking researcher, a dear friend, and a true gentleman. He joined us just last week as we simulcast with the Western Connecticut UFO Conference. So, Peter Robbins, it's a long time no see, huh? <laughs> yeah, not since last Sunday. Huh. I know. Hey, you know... Time is relative, and it could have been a very long time. <laughs> so I guess we'll we'll yeah. just we'll we'll just hop right into it here. Um, yeah. But uh, I guess this is this is going to be very very graphically focused. Um, well, graphically intensive, and that's that's for radio, not yeah. for radio. Yes, and and by, <laughs> by that we mean uh, not not graphic as in as in visceral, but graphic as in um, we're going to be dealing with trying to describe photos with words. So we will do our best. So Peter will describe each ad that we're talking about. And if you're listening on a device that has access to the Internet, um, you can go to the page for this show and you can see the illustrations. It's uh, BehindTheParanormal.com. You can click the link above for upcoming shows. Uh, This one will be right at the top. And you'll see a link for the talking points uh, slash illustrations, and that will take you right there. And uh, if you're watching on on uh, via YouTube or uh, streaming us uh, with with video, um, I'll be I'll be switching back and forth between Peter's wonderful visage and the visages of those ads. Uh, so Peter, <laughs> give us some background on UFOs and advertising, um, the ridicule the subject enjoyed until recently. Didn't seem to extend into selling things, it seems. Yeah. Um, Like a lot of people who are interested in the subject, at some point, fairly early on, and that probably for me would have been in the later 1970s, I noticed occasionally that there were ads for whatever um, featuring aliens and UFOs. And um, I didn't give it a lot of thought, but... As a kind of natural archivist, I would clip those ads, and we're talking now primarily uh, about newspaper and primarily magazine ads. Uh, Of course, right now, print magazines are an increasingly endangered species, as are print newspapers, but back then, that was the way it was. And the more I collected, the more I became just interested in what, was going on behind the scenes with Madison Avenue, so to say, in the advertising industry. Did they know something we didn't? Or did it come down to the simple fact that their field research and keeping a pulse on the popular culture, which the advertising industry is, of course, very good at, that they um, simply began to realize that if people see these kinds of images, whether or not they're portrayed in a realistic respectful way or more often than not a lighter hearted manner they will stop and if you can get them to stop then maybe you can get them to buy something key to our growing up and going into a record store and flipping through a zillion albums if we would stop on one particular cover there was a foot in the door that we might buy it so um this became a major research project for me but ceased before 2017 when, um, as you've just mentioned, things began to change in terms of the way that the world perceives the UFO, UAP, 
subject and giving it, if not more credence, more respect. So I don't know how continuing ads, and again, most of them are not in print now, they're broadcast, um, has changed in character, if it has changed, since that transitional moment in late December of 2017, when the world started to let go of associating ridicule immediately with the subject. Anyway, um, at a certain point, I contacted a number of colleagues here and abroad and said, do you see these ads in your local publications or your country's publications? And if so, do you do what I do and pull them out and put them in a file? And many of my colleagues said yes. I said, can you scan those for me and send them to me? And that gave me the beginning of the database that I started to work off of. Um, Within the research community, there have been two prevailing attitudes. The first is that, again, that Madison Avenue knows that this imagery sells and that they have no secret agenda, that whatever it is that they can throw up there that might get people to buy product, they will do it. They know this is one of the subjects, and that's all there is to it. The other is, is there more to it? Are there people, um, corporate heads, for example, who already have a sense of the reality or did uh, of truly anomalous UFOs and either have been asked to uh, by the forces that be or on their own simply started to uh, direct their folks to look for ads, you know, situations where they could use this uh, imagery to subliminally continue to inform folks that this is real to help make ultimate disclosure uh, simpler or less traumatic when it comes through the door. Any questions so far, gentlemen? Well, how far back, Peter, uh, does that sort of advertising go, have you found? Uh, The earliest examples I was able to found go back to the late 1960s with a um, a resurgence in the later 70s. And then after, I guess, about 1987, the year that both Whitley Strieber's communion and Bud Hopkins' uh, very powerful case study, Intruders, were published. And then shortly after that, the movie based on communion, and by this time, the Travis Walton story going into film, that a surprising number of um, companies, and they could be, you know, a tiny mom and pop company or a major multinational company, not only went into using this imagery, but specifically imagery related to alien abduction. Uh, And it continued on until... Really, I, I laid this project aside probably about 2012, 2015 or so. Okay, uh, do you want to take us through some of these uh, these ads? We have them up on the uh, the video feed here, uh, and also again on the on the website uh, behind the paranormal dot com and the talking points for this show. And Peter will also. Uh, be prevailed upon to describe the ads for those who can't see them. Yeah, and um, give me one second here while I bring up my copies of those ads, and then we'll talk about a bunch of ads that, in fact, I don't have right here on hand. It's great working with professionals who are completely prepared, isn't it? <laughs> well, if if that's actually the case. Well, I mean, it, this is this is the 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 truly live, ladies and gentlemen. You know, we yeah. <laughs> we do the best okay. we can. In that spirit, um, the first ad um, it shows a ridiculously fake UFO hanging over a well to the uh, right to the left of a uh, evergreen yeah, tree right up on top there. Mm. You can see the string attached, uh, which was always in the pre-digital days a giveaway (laughs) that we're dealing with something that may not be truly anomalous. Uh, The text says, with this quality, nobody will feel cheated, (laughs) which is very clever. um, And it is an ad for uh, 3M manufacturing, 
photographic paper. Um, this kind of tongue-in-cheek uh, poking fun at fake UFO photos, I find an awful lot of fun, basically, actually. And uh, the second ad is an Audi ad from Norway from 2000. And the text here is proof of intelligent life and a UFO. Oh, yeah. Again, this playful quality uh, that works so well um, in a very stri- stripped-down kind of advertising. I'm noticing, oh. uh, just glancing through some of these, there's there's a lot of Audi ads, which I wouldn't expect from a high-end <laughs> car manufacturer. I, it says something maybe about um, uh, the European uh, sensibility as opposed to the American one. Mm. Um, I don't think, number one, they were nearly as concerned as, say, you know, Chevrolet or Ford might be, that they were associating themselves with a topic that's ridiculed. It was simply clever and funny and got you to stop and pay attention. And... Um, the third ad is a Spanish auto ad from 2007, and the text there is, Nobody will believe you've seen a price like it. <laughs> they don't even have a car in that ad. Exactly. Well, You're, unless the, the, the flying saucer there is the car, then, then that is... Well, not yet. Well, no, the car is in the lower right, very discreetly tucked away in a yellow circle. Oh, oh I see, yeah, uh, that, okay. So it's just a kind of sleight of hand... Again, very clever and as simple as it can be. And more often than not, the formula is less is more. So we go now to a um, an ad in Spanish from 2008 and a company in the Honduras. I am embarrassed to say I don't know what it's for because I don't read Spanish to either one of you. Well, we, we looked it up. It's an electronics store. There you go. The big website and stuff now. It actually, uh, this Bende Dot, uh, which a lot of people are simply not familiar with today, but what we grew up with, this was the way of printing photographs in newspapers going back to uh, even the, the late 19th century. And it reminds me of one of the most famous print ads that you and some of your listeners who are old enough will remember for Colombian coffee. And it was a grainy sort of black and white UFO shaped object in the sky less focused than this and it was put out by I think the Colombian government's coffee council and the text was fabulous it simply said we know why they're here yeah it's uh, I'm not getting electronics out of this but it's it's a scene with a, I guess a UFO hovering over the treetops yeah. And then the sky above, and um, I can't read the Spanish. It's because, as you say, Peter, it's kind of a grainy newspaper, mm. but we get the point. Mm. Yeah. Um, the nation of Singapore is one of the strictest nations in the world. They probably have uh, among the very lowest crime, crime stats, high standard of living, um, but it's draconian. You can go to jail for chewing gum and spitting it out on the street, and that's not an exaggeration. Hmm. And you'd think they have no axe to grind with this subject, but we have a very clever one here. They were among the first countries to start to institute national anti-pollution policies and the equivalent of you know a higher and higher awareness of carbon. And what we have here is atmospheric pollution, atmospheric pollution attacks everyone, and some poor alien is in great distress here. And yeah. um, this is the this is Singapore um, as an entity putting out this ad. And uh, we have a shocked uh, coffee drinker there with his partner down for the count. Um, this is the oldest one I have here, and it's very Flintstones in a way, but years before that show. It goes back to the earlier 1960s. It's from the American Independent Light and Power Company. And ain't that cute? This was the most interesting <laughs> to me. We have a 1950s, 1960s house with a 
a family <laughs> flying like the Jetsons yeah. in a UFO type craft, and everybody's looking up and everybody's happy. And uh, more power to you, it says, from yeah, the U.S. energy separate, industry. It's also so geared to that moment in American cultural history. Mom is obviously coming back from shopping. We have the bag of groceries on the seat in the flying saucer next to her. And, of course, the family beagle has its own seat in the back of the car as well. Mm, A literal nuclear family. Well, the the, the funny thing is that uh, when we were kids, and I'm sure you were no exception, Peter, we all thought we'd be flying around by now in these things. Of course. Jetpacks. Where are our jetpacks? Think I, of the I air still... traffic control nightmares. <laughs> you know, this is why we're not. I mean, we, you know. No one ever thought about the logistics of, of yeah, jetpacks I mean, and, and uh, flying saucers. Bodies would be rained from the be, sky. You know, be bothered by that practical consideration back then. Uh, again, jetpacks, we were seeing them in you know, popular mechanics in 1960 and... They have them. We know they have them. We've seen them on YouTube. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you can get them if you have the money. There, there's uh. one that works by water. And as a matter of fact, it, uh, it's used by, by rescue personnel, EMTs and first responders mm. in Scandinavia. I'm actually fairly sure I've, I've seen people who are, are on the wealthier side of, of the income spectrum having them as, as uh, well, the prices recreational. Are coming down. <laughs> you know what to give me for Christmas, Ben? A, a, a water jetpack? Yeah, I'd love to have one of those. I love flying. Well, it's airplanes I can't stand. But. This next one, I don't think uh, American advertising agencies, it's it's not a matter of courage. It's sort of a cultural support. Um, I will say that I wish that I could show, and I think years ago when I gave this talk in Exeter, I did show video for a Mexican airline. It was a series of three videos, and I, besides making me laugh um, and, and considering that if I was in Mexico, I might fly this airline because they had a sense of humor, even if it was dark. <laughs> in the three, the first one is two pilots are flying along, and all of a sudden there's an alien on their windscreen, smiling and tapping, just like, hi, how are you doing? And huh. either with the wiper blade or whatever, the pilot gets rid of the alien. We see in the follow-up video commercial, the alien has returned to the windscreen and now looks somewhat perturbed and disappointed. The pilot once again dispenses with the alien. The third time, the alien is back. The pilot tries to get rid of it. The alien shakes his head no, touches the windscreen, and you see the cracks start to radiate throughout the windscreen and then you know things are going to go very bad for the pilots for not having been nice to the alien. Oh, dear. Now, airline industry, the airline industry in America does not make jokes about plane crashes to sell flights. Uh, so that had a very special place in my heart. And <laughs> this next one, which is um, an ad from an Argentine uh, advertising agency, um, stating that they extra bright since 1942. The ad is from 2008. Isn't that nice? Yeah, I, I don't know if I get this. I don't either, and I don't care. It's um, <laughs> you, you have it's, a flying saucer type thing. I think it's with, actually a polish nugget polish there in the lower right. Oh, okay. <clears throat> but, but again, the craft is, is for, on fire, and there are beams coming out of it or hitting it, or. or it's open to interpretation. It will need a good polishing, what's left of it when it crashes, or we're just missing it culturally, but well, I could not share it with you. I guess you have um, to live in Argentina. Then we get wonderfully um, blunt. You, you guys may know from your scholarship in UFO studies that the very first book on Roswell was co-authored by the famous Charles Berlitz. Mm -hmm. the founder of the Berlitz uh, uh, language schools. And here we see Mr. Berlitz's uh, operation return to that theme with an ad for the language school from 2009. And we have an alien who's rather comical (laughs) with, what, four (laughs) eyes or something, and uh, pincers for hands, uh, apparently uh, singing the praises of the Berlitz language school, right? 
and, and the undercurrent there um, is the most dangerous creature in the world, in the universe. And then we learn that as long as you speak to him in Chinese, everything is okay. <laughs> Mostly. Mostly. Yeah. So it, it may also be a commentary on the relationship between the United States uh, that uh, and China, that business people should learn Chinese so that they are not dealing with the most dangerous creature in the universe. But it's really in your face. This is a very <laughs> yes, blunt it is. ad. And we now go to uh, one that's also very blunt and actually kind of shocked me. It's from a company called AudioTech. And the text says, any sound you can imagine. Now, you want to describe that one to your audience? Well, uh, it's a little difficult. <laughs> you, you've got the classic uh, abduction medical examination scene, uh, presumably in, inside some sort of alien craft. And there are some very scary-looking guys who are apparently getting ready to examine another very scary-looking guy. They're, they're in these green lab coat kind of things. And uh, almost reminds me of uh, Travis Walton's movie uh, Fire in the Sky. Uh, but th they were pretty handsome compared with these. Yeah. I, I would add to that that when I look at this, I see a being on the table and two beings in the professional health support positions. I see a being about to give birth. Oh, okay. Could be. And because of the, the nature of the... Uh, the placement and, and the beings, and that locks into the text, which is any sound you can imagine, which might be fairly hair-raising, <laughs> even if it's just a human situation, but here we can, are left to our imaginations, but yes, any sound we can imagine, and this was, um, uh, Audio Tech is the name of the product. Well, I've only seen a, a birth once, and that he's sitting right here. Uh, <laughs> his older was brother was a cesarean so it wasn't a lot but anyway Ooh. yeah they could very well be uh, a birth scene very interesting uh, giving birth to what I wonder <laughs> and here we shift gears again dramatically we have of course a very attractive very uh, uh, sophisticated fashion conscious almost glowing woman I think that's probably a well-known actress, but I'm not sure. And it says, alien, feel extraordinary. And then the signature at the bottom, and it is a representative ad from a, uh, a company called Clarence Fragrance Group. It's for perfume. Hmm. Alien, feel extraordinary. I don't know if I'd associate that with perfume, but I'm not a... Yeah, a I see you smell so... Maybe it's a, you smell so alien tonight. Maybe it's a, a, a play on words, extraterrestrial, extra fragrant. I don't know. Well, that's well. A, probably um, they could go with that with the next ad. This one is hysterical. Um, it combines the great um, Michelangelo uh, freeze at, um, um, in his tremendously famous ceiling per, um, um, painting, um, Oh, the Sistine Chapel? Exactly, of, you know, God and Adam touching fingers, but with two slight differences. Yeah, yes. It's an ad for Crazy Glue from Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I saw this, Peter, it reminds me of the scene in, um, one of the scenes in E.T., Mm, that's what I thought. Where the young boy Elliot is touching the yes, director. Elliot. Yeah, that, that sort of thing. But but certainly uh, there have been um, uh, renditions of the Michelangelo uh, painting with an alien hand rather than, than the, the, the divine hand. So this is certainly one of them. And what we have here, of course, is E.T.'s hand uh, on the left and a human hand on the right touching fingertips. The only text says eternity. Below it is the uh, the tube of Crazy Glue, the brand um, called Three Bond. And this can be looked at in a number of ways. If you are a true believer, a pacifist, a um, kind of in the spirit of the contactees, this is what it's all about. Humans and non-human intelligences connecting in a peaceful way. If you're a pop culture fan, it's just great fun. 
with uh, one of your favorite movies. Yeah. If, mm. yeah. you know, you see things in terms of symbols, this could be yet one more way that the forces that be have to condition us to, it's all right, it's going to be fine, you know, we're going to be together, and maybe looking, you know, uh, symbolically deeper, we are connected, and we have always been connected. And given the strength of Crazy Glue, we may stay connected. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, uh, that's, pro- that's probably it. <laughs> yeah. At this yeah. point, also, why don't we take our mid-show break? Yeah. Uh, you're listening to Behind the Paranormal with Paul and Ben Eno on WON 1240 AM, 99.5 FM in New England's beautiful Blackstone River Valley. And we'll be right back with, with our great guest, Peter Robbins, and more advertising. So stick with us. Holy Trinity Parish Bazaar is Saturday, November 12th, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the former Monsignor Gallery School, 1371 Park Avenue, Woonsocket, which is handicap accessible. There will be gift certificate raffles, split the pot, theme basket, special raffles, also home baked goods and fudge, handmade items, crafts, gift items, books, jewelry, knitted items, and much more. Visit with Santa... Give them your wish list and take photos with the children. Kitchen will be open for lunch and will include the popular dynamites, meatball sandwiches, soup, hamburgers, hot dogs, fries, and more. For further information, contact me, Yvette Hull, at 766-5663. Local and live at 99.5 FM. And welcome back to Behind the Paranormal with Paul and Ben Eno on WON Radio, AM and FM. And uh, streaming live on YouTube, on TuneIn.com, and on the Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. We're doing a, a very a different kind of show today with our good friend Peter Robbins. We're talking about alien and UFO and alien th- themes or imagery in advertising. So, Peter, let's continue. Yeah. Um, as I mentioned, when I started to study these ads, I saw that they broke into a number of categories, um, some of them extremely innocent and lighthearted, uh, in children's breakfast foods and um, services and toys for children, to back engineering as a theme in high-tech company ads, um, gene splicing in uh, medical um, hardware ads, um, abduction was the subject that came up most post-1987. Uh, one of the, the major players were automobile companies. Another was insurance companies. And one of the great classics there that dates back from the 70s, one of America's biggest companies um, is the ad. It's a simple cartoon. It's two men camping. It's night. They're sitting in front of their campfire, drawing up a tent in the background, and one is speaking, the other is looking past him. The one who's speaking is saying, why such and such of Omaha? That's my insurance company. Why do you ask? The man behind him is looking as a large UFO with a mechanical arm with a tweezers on the end of it is about to pick him up. Um Hmm. Also, at about that time, one of the best-known abduction-related ads, and this is at the beginning of the cell phone era, so we're probably the 1980s, later 1980s at this point, or the 90s, and it's a beautiful illustration. It's um, Bell Telephone, when they still existed as an entity per se, and it shows a guy in a golf court, golf cart being lifted off the golf course by a unidentified uh, with a tractor beam above him and he is looking up at it and he's holding his cell phone and the text was at a time like this what company's phone would you rather have to rely on (laughs) and it was very powerful and very simple these next ad eight ads are examples of abduction related ads and um, the first one here very simple graphic is from Fiat of Brazil. It was published in 2009. Um, 
I don't know if Millie is the name of the uh, automobile distributor or a model or what, but the simple graphics and the distress position of the individual on the ground um, suggests that there is a problem here. Uh, let me just remind everyone, Peter, I'm sorry to interrupt it, uh, for those of you who did not hear this previously, for those of you who are not watching the video feed, you can go to BehindTheParanormal.com, click the link on Upcoming Shows. Peter's uh, show will appear here, and uh, there's a link to uh, look at the uh, illustrations from this show on the Talking Points page, and you'll be able to see them all. Uh, if I can uh, interrupt uh, again here, we have um, a question from Michelle in New Hampshire. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Alrighty, Michelle writes to us, uh, Hi Paul, I'm enjoying the show today, and as I listen, I'm wondering if Peter has considered writing a book containing a compilation of those UFO ads. Um, actually, no, I haven't, Michelle. I think part of the reason is, the way I work, I, I explore a topic um, as fully as I can to the degree it interests me, and then usually move on to another. Also, because every advertisement in question has its own copyrights. Right. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Yeah. Ownership agreements. Some of them are companies that may not be in business anymore. Um, it, that's not a process that I would enjoy. But, you know, in, in like a scholarly presentation, I can show them all. <coughs> you know, it's, it's not like you're generating a huge amount of income for yourself by... It, uh, sampling like that, so to say. Yeah, we, but, we've had to deal with that sort of thing, and it's not pretty. <laughs> and, you know, as, as book, our family book publishers, when we were inadvisedly drawn into that industry years ago. Oh boy! Well, our next image is from Ecuador. It's published by an advertising agency in 2009, and it involves the favorite advertising subject of abductions next to automobiles, which is cows, who sadly are taken or seem to be at times for testing, etc. It gives an opportunity for some very high contrast graphics. And this is a classic example of selling a product with this kind of uh, ominous uh, image of a fully articulated UFO lifting a black and white cow up in a a pillar of light, other cows on the grounds in a pasture, and the text is, we protect your cattle from almost everything. Hmm. And the company is um, Ideal Ambrec, and it manufactures the strongest barbed wire there is. Now, as we see, the text is correct. We protect your cattle from almost everything everything. Huh. I don't see how barbed wire can, can prevent <laughs> UFOs from taking your cattle. Well, the, there's something we considered doing. There, there, <clears throat> there is a, um, a very interesting model that is a working uh, electric yes. model that is meant for model train layouts and you put it on your, your farm on, on your train layout and it's a motorized UFO that's lifting a cow uh. Uh, oh, no. off the ground, and then the uh, the alien is down there arguing with the farmer and the dog. Oh no! And so we were considering getting that and putting it on our book table at with some of these cost. events. Yeah, so may- maybe you'll see it next year at Exeter. I don't uh, know. Uh, put me down for one too, because like, <laughs> when when we were kids, for me, one of the great joys of of childhood toy memories was the um, um, the Hanukkah where I was given a Lionel train set. Oh, yes. Mm. That was, you know, that, that was the state of the art. But they and didn't give you any that, aliens or cows, right? No, I was going to say it was not even a, I'm sure, a thought in the originator's mind who probably hadn't been born yet. Yeah. But that's, that's something that could get people back to the train table. Um <laughs> Our next one here is the international uh, well-known company, Philips, which manufactures um, technology and um, home appliances uh, that are available all over the world. Uh, An abduction theme um, ad here from 2012. The text, once again, we see a cow being (laughs) lifted up into a waiting UFO, and the text at the bottom, very simple box, 
shows the vacuum, shows the logo, and it says, performance, our strongest yet. Are they suggesting that aliens are using uh, Philips vacuum cleaners to do this? Well, you never know. Or it, it has a, a great deal of, of suction power, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Maybe we're wrong about our technological idea of it being lifted by anything but. You'll be saying uh, to yourself, to holy cow. The next one is from Chalupa Hot Sauce. It's an ad from Singapore again, from 2010, and it locates, it identifies itself as rescue food. It's a very large bottle, so large that it has broken down the fence. Cows are hiding behind it, while one cow is, yes, (laughs) you are psychically correct, being lifted up into a waiting UFO. This theme has absolutely permeated the entire advertising world all over the world. And I find that fascinating. Yes, indeed. So the uh, we, suggestion is what? You, the cow should throw the bottle at the UFO? I don't know. Well, I think it's it's saving the flavor. Oh, okay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and we now go to um, an abduction ad, uh, themed ad, from the Dominican Republic. Once again, we have a, well, in this case, a car being lifted into UFO, and whatever text it has, it has, but it speaks for itself, and yet once again, a being taken is the theme to help sell products. Or, again, is it about conditioning? These next four are part of an ongoing series from a company, an American company, I think, called longs and they make different kind of sauces and what we see here is a ufo yes lifting from the ocean where a whale and other large fish it says close encounters of the third kind and the product that they are selling at the bottom is horseradish sauce which, of course, goes very well with abducted fish. <laughs> mm, yes. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> and here we see, in, in perhaps a, in a more enlightened culture, the saucer is abducting an assortment of vegetables and very colorfully rendered, all in their cone of light, close encounters of the third kind. So was this associated with the film? Uh, the, the, the font is the same as the... Uh that of exactly. the film, so they must have been uh, have some it sort of relationship been, with the Spielberg or somebody. It may well have been. In my more formal talk, I, I draw uh, lines between Nabisco and craft manufacturing, especially with cereals and crackers, with special um, limited edition, which I find so funny in terms of food products. Oh, I'm so glad you know. someone else does, too. <laughs> yeah. would, McDonald's is bringing back their fake, you know, pork rib sandwich. It's a special edition. It's only going to last so far, you know, so sleep at line in the McDonald's line tonight so you can get these marvelous products. Again, um, easy enough to make tie-in deals like this, and the Spielberg organization was very clever at it. And we have our last longs sauce here. This one is pork, fowl, beef, and that's not a walrus. I don't know. <laughs> I, <wouldn't laughs> I don't know. It's just, somehow that just doesn't fit into the food group, but it's, it's a bit a of a there. Chicken, in the upper pig, left. Yeah. Anyway, it, they all go great with Long's horseradish <laughs> sauce. And I have saved, um, again, as you know, I wasn't able to... Um, access my master file of these. I, I need to transpose it in some ways. It's so long ago since I did it. Um, but the last image that I've saved here is one of my all-time favorites. It's from Cuba, uh, a, a bank there in 2009 called Banco Financiero. Now, this is right after you know the market crash, but at the same time, the economy in Cuba may have been very separate. Graphically, it's spectacular. And the message is poignantly hysterical. With that, well, we have a um, 
a graphic here. Of, it, it, I somehow wouldn't associate this with a bank, <laughs> but you've got uh, several UFOs uh, shooting beams down and destroying a city. Oh, yeah. Um, it it looks like the Ukraine. Lately, but. And the central image, though, is on a building yet to be destroyed is a billboard that says, and with the bank's logo, Whatever happens, you'll return. You'll you'll earn eight and a half percent. And I thought, shit, that is a long time uh, ago. Remember the FCC. <laughs> but isn't that glorious in all of its destruction? And yes, once again, this is not America. Bank culture in America does not advertise like this. No, no, it doesn't. But that's uh, the last ad in our in our graphics, and again, uh, behind the paranormal dot com for those who haven't been able to see them, uh, go to that, and uh, you will see on the upcoming shows page, this show, and a link below that to the talking points page and these illustrations for this show. P- Peter, that, you, that's such a fun subject here. I think. Yeah, it is, and I'll tell you um, as I continue to do it. My mind shifted. I, I had started with the idea that this was all kind of happenstance, that having worked a summer um, for a small advertising agency in New York City uh, in that summer between high school and my first year of university, a little personal window in, just generating ideas that will sell products. But I came upon a series of ads Again, you may vaguely remember, I think they're from the late 80s. I Every search that I did, they were television ads. It was a pair of them. I was unable to find them, and they really intrigued me. They were for Dockers Pants, which is a branch of the Levi's company, a huge multinational. And it was all cinema verite, very grainy black and white. The camera was kind of from it, a party scene camera from about the knee to the chest. And there's a lot of background noise and people moving around, obviously wearing docker pants. And part of the voiceover is somebody saying, hey, you know the government has EBs? And another voice says, what's an EB? And another voice says, an extraterrestrial biological entity. And then the other voice goes, oh, EB, EBGBs. And <laughs> the ad ends. And I thought, wait a minute. The term EB, E-B-E, for extra ter- extraterrestrial biological entity at that time, was not part of popular culture. It was a term that the UFO research community was somewhat familiar with, accredited to Dr. Detlev Bronk, one of the original named people uh, in the 12 individuals uh, in Truman's Majestic 12 cabinet. And I thought, this is interesting. Um, And I started to do some research on the then CEO, of um, um, Levi Strauss Company, who turned out to be a board member of whether it was um, uh, the Rand Corporation or another government-associated think tank. Um, It was enough of a connection that made me feel this guy may be a knowledgeable insider who had introduced, once again, a very cutting-edge term, scientific term, for these non-human beings. Um, And was there more to that and to him? I continued to dig down, but was not able to find anything to confirm it. Now, that doesn't mean that I hadn't hit on something, but because I couldn't find corroborating evidence, I had to um, simply go on. Somebody else might have said, well, here it is. Here's the connection. It's obviously generated by some secret group within the government, and here's the proof. That's not proof. It's not even evidence if there's nothing to substantiate it. But I think there may be something to it. Um, The one thing that I did find in common with all of the ads, whether it was a small-town publication for a local restaurant or a huge computer manufacturer or medical uh, hardware manufacturer was that they all poke fun at the subject in one way or another. Um, Even if it was with a wink and a nod, 
they were not taking the subject seriously. They were positioning the subjects, aliens and UFO type things, in the hopes of selling products. So as our dear friend and colleague, the late great Stanton Friedman, had coined a term, this one is still in my gray box. Yes, I remember him saying that. One question that arises, and this comes out of my many years in the newspaper business, albeit from the editorial standpoint, there is usually an age group that is targeted by a certain ad or kind of ads. What age group would UFO-themed ads target? Or does it vary? Yeah, I think it varies based on the kind of product and where the image is placed. Obviously, if you're going to have something in Wired magazine, it's going to attract a different audience than if it's in the ARP journal for retired people. Placement is everything in that sense, and the kind of sophistication or lack of same, same thing. In 1997, the 50th anniversary of the UFO, modern age of UFOs, Roswell, New Mexico, of course, was a central location of activity that summer, and the Roswell Daily Record, the local daily newspaper there, and the magazine that it puts out every week, were replete with ads with alien themes, the most logical place to expect it in the world at that moment. And some of them, for me, were poignant and charming in that a grain and feed store that might have been in business for 100 years is they'll just tack on a theme to show, you know, like in Close Encounters, that road going through the desert with light coming over the mountain, and underneath it would say, people come from far and wide, you know, to buy our products. Cute, clever, but aimed at a very regional, not, you know, city slicker, sophisticated audience. By the same token, the ads for cellular technology in Newsweek, in Time magazine that were so prevalent through like the 1990s, the New York Times, which took such a sour position on the subject for decades, for several years through the 1990s and into the early part of the 2000s, ran a small box ad, little rectangle, maybe one inch by two inches, of a little guy opening a door and looking out into the universe with a little UFO out there. They must have run it 500 times, and I'm not exaggerating, just where they needed a space filler and, you know, subscribe to the Times, that kind of thing. So I think placement and publication or now, of course, more and more broadcast or online venue would determine who that audience that they're aiming to secure is. Well, I'm thinking in terms of advertising of something that was immensely popular, not quite UFO related, but it was messing with Bigfoot. The ads, I think everybody saw them. They were about 10 years ago, and I don't know if yeah. I don't watch that much TV. But people, it was humorous. There was Bigfoot and these outdoorsmen, hunters or whatever, would be you know, playing tricks on him and all this stuff. I can't remember what it was advertising, though. I, it was the ad. It's one of those ads that was so good, I can't remember the product. You know, it, st- it stood alone. I want to say it was something food-related. Yeah, or, possibly. Or maybe it was like a beer commercial or something. I can't remember. I don't know. We could look it up. But, but it shows that, that uh, I guess, um, high strangeness can be a very effective advertising uh, yeah. theme. So uh, what also, do you, you know, go ahead. Yeah. You know, and it's very true, I think, because whether or not we take it seriously or we don't take it seriously, whether it makes us anxious or interested, it's it's one of the, you know, 500 pound elephants behind the brick wall, so to say. <laughs> yeah. It's always there in our lives, whether or not we want to embrace it or we want a bigger brick wall to keep us more separate from it. Well, it's well, kind of like trivializing the monstrous, you know, and, yeah, and yeah. it's it's taking taking that thing that we 
we find uncomfortable, and you can use that to kind of be an umbrella term for whether it's anxiety-inducing or whatever, and then taking it and trivializing it and using I, I it to it, push a message. I think You're also either, right. No, go, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I think it's also important to remember the importance and the power of humor mm. in selling us something that, in other terms, might have a, a somewhat um, anxious aspect to it. And I'll close by saying... Good old Kmart, they used to advertise what they called the blue light special. Mm. And it would mean if they're having a sale in one part of the store, a blue light would go on and you go over there and you get a break on it. And they did one ad which had a UFO hovering, flying a blue beam of light down at the ground. And it was um, right about that time that the Travis Walton case had broken big. And I, I remember in giving the talk just thinking out loud and saying, if you were a UFO abductee um, and you were shopping in Kmart at the time and an announcement came on that the blue light special is back and you're advertising with a blue beam of light shot to the ground <laughs> and a blue beam, you might not be attracted to that store display. In fact, you might leave the store. It's Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if you agree, Ben, but I think Peter, uh, given the context of the show, should have used... Uh, a cow rather than an elephant in his illustration previously. <laughs> yes, the but, cow uh, behind the brick wall. Yeah, exactly. Not so, know, um, we not know how. So, Peter, tell us about your books, uh, your website, where people can find out more. Uh, right now, the best way to find me, contact me, is to um, watch or listen to my weekly radio show, of which these two gentlemen have been guests. That's Meanwhile Here on Earth. On Mondays, 7 to 9 Eastern Standard Time, um, and that's on KGRA Digital Broadcasting. Also, to check my Facebook page, where I post everything that's going on with me right now, and as soon as my woefully out-of-date website is back up and running, I will let you guys know, but otherwise, you can always follow me there on Twitter and uh, on Facebook. We have to say that Meanwhile Here on Earth has some fascinating guests, and I'm not tongue-in-cheek talking about us. But, uh, <laughs> well, you were. Uh, other people, um, I'm thinking of Reverend Michael Carter and other people we've been on the air with uh, on the, the excellent panels you have, who, who inevitably become dear friends of ours. That, that doesn't happen a lot on mm. some of these shows, you know. So, Peter, no. we, we thank you for that, and we thank you for a very, very fun show today. What's your next event coming up? Um, Thanksgiving. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it gets kind of quiet this time of year. I have some virtual talks coming up, which I'm very much looking forward to. And now, like all of us in the work, looking for live gigs for next year for sure. Excellent. Very good. Peter, thank you for, I think it's the most fun show we've had in a while. Mm, yeah, oh, I agree. Good. Well, My thank pleasure. you very much. And we'll Love be talking to you as you we always do. Okay, and have a great Thanksgiving. We'll talk to you before that. Yeah, hopefully. You bet. Okay, <laughs> very good. Okay, let's get to our announcements here. Take it away, Father. Okay, uh, look for us at the Para Expo 2023 from aboard the USS Salem at Quincy, Mass. Uh, May 19th and 21st through the 21st, we'll be among the speakers and we'll broadcast live from the ship on Sunday, May 21st. Now, even before that, I just had a conversation with our, our good friend uh, Tom Spitaleri about the April event in, uh, based really in Kittery, Maine, and that's going to be the New England Parafest. And we're going to do what we did last year. You don't know this yet, Ben. But, oh. uh, you know, Peter's going to, uh, I should say, um, uh, Tom is going to come down with a couple of his uh, uh, minions there and we're, the, some of the speakers, and we're going to start the thing off with the show here in the studio. Mm. And then the following uh, weekend, we'll go up to Kittery and, and speak there. I'm not sure what the subject will be yet. So, okie dokie. Then uh, you can also visit our show website that's behind the paranormal.com where you can find over 1,100 hours of our regular shows and special broadcasts since 2008 from CBS Radio, Achieve Radio, and here on WOON, AM, and FM. Uh, also, uh, you, here you can uh, listen to many of the broadcasts on major podcast Ooh. platforms, uh, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, uh, YouTube, and even on Spotify as well. And you can download our show app. We have a very simple one, but it's free. 
uh, at BehindTheParanormal.com. Right on the main page there is a link, and you can use it uh, to follow our shows. You'll get um, announcements of the shows when they're posted, and we'll have links to the videos and the audio. You can also browse our books along with those of our guest co-hosts at our show website, uh, where you can also find more about the show, our many cases, uh, and public appearances, and how to book us. And uh, don't forget about our charity page uh, that's on our show website with links that uh, go to several good causes we've adopted over the years, including Hope for Hilldale Cemetery uh, in Haverhill, Massachusetts, USA Cares, Canadian Veterans Advocacy, Helping Haiti's Orphans, the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation of America, the Sisterhood of Ground Zero, and most recently, the Western Kentucky Tornado Relief Fund. So what do we have in Pandora's box for next week, Ben? Now, well, ready to be unleashed on the world, uh, on October 30th, we will welcome... Earl Gray Anderson, uh, a rock musician who also serves as the Mutual UFO Network's Assistant Director for Southern California and on MUFON's Experiencer Resource Team. Okay. I'm looking forward to that one, too. Uh, no time for the quote, I guess. Uh, I'm Paul Eno. And I'm Ben Eno. And thanks for joining us on our great cosmic journey. We shall see you next time on Behind the Paranormal. Return to this radio frequency 167 hours from now for another edition of Behind the Paranormal with Paul and Ben Eno.